Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So last week we started making our gaster blasters, but they don't yet shoot the beams out of their mouth. This week, let's fix that. So let's get straight into it. Go to the bottom right corner, go up to paint a new sprite. We need the rectangle tool here. We need to make sure that the fill is white. The outline is set to nothing. And then in the middle of the screen, draw a little rectangle. Make sure it's not too thick. Now to make sure that this is properly centered, just drag this here until the cross goes into the crosshairs in the middle. And then put your mouse on the ends of the beam until you get these sideways double arrows. And then you can take this end of the beam here into the middle and the other end of the beam all the way to the edge of the drawing area. Let's rename this sprite as Gaster Beam. And then let's head to the code of our Gaster Blaster sprite. Now we have this define spawn beam right here and we're going to put some code underneath this. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. And this code is going to look very similar to the code that we used to create our Gaster Blasters. So we're going to need to make three new variables. Go to Variables, click on Make a Variable. The first one is going to be called Beam Spawn X. Press OK. The next one is going to be Beam Spawn Y. And the last one is going to be beam spawn D. Press OK. Get out set beam spawn X, beam spawn Y, and beam spawn D. Now remember, this is the code that's running inside the Gaster Blaster when it's creating a beam. So where do we want to create the beam? Well, we want to create it right in the same spot as the Gaster Blaster. So let's go to Motion and look down until we find our X position. Drag that onto Beam Spawn X. Get the Y position and put it over Beam Spawn Y and Direction and put it over Beam Spawn D. Then let's go to Control Look down until you find create clone of Gaster Beam. Now we need to put some code inside our Gaster Beams. So go to the Gaster Beam sprite, go to events, get out when green flag clicked, go to looks, get out hide, go to control, get out when I start as clone, now the first thing we need to do is make sure that our beams go to the right place. So go to motion, get out, go to X and Y, and point in direction. Go to variables, get out our handy beam spawn X for the X coordinate, and beam spawn Y for the Y coordinate, and beam spawn D for the point in direction. Now we need to animate our Gaster Beams. So head to Looks, and you guessed it, we're going to need a ghost effect. So get out Set Ghost Effect to 100. That will ensure they're entirely faded out. Get out a Show, and now go to Control, and get out a Repeat 7. Let's head back to looks, get out change ghost effect by minus 15. This is going to reduce the amount of ghost effect we have and make the beam fade in. And we're also gonna make the beam grow slightly. So get out change size by 15. Now this repeat seven is how long the animation's going to go for, and these numbers here will control how dramatic the animation is. So feel free to change some of these numbers if you like. See what kind of effects you get if you make the repeat number larger, these numbers larger or smaller. 
Now we need the beam to fade out again, and I want that to happen much faster than the fade in. So right click where we've got our repeat seven, and then normal click on duplicate, put this on the bottom. I'm going to make this repeat three, change ghost effect by 30, and change size by minus two. Finally, let's go to control and get out delete this clone. Okay, let's test that out and see what it looks like. First, let's get some of these variables hidden. So go to variables and untick some of these. I'm going to untick the beam spawns and the gaster spawns. And in fact, probably the gaster move distance as well. And then go across to your projectile sprite. Make sure that you've got a gaster attack in your mode equals evade. Then let's hit go and see what happens. Okay, let's see what you look like. Oh, that looks great. Yes. Now the gaster beams don't hurt us yet, of course, but we're going to fix that soon. The other thing we should probably take notice of is where the gaster beam begins. You can see my one is sort of happening up here underneath the head. I want my gaster beam to look like it's coming out of just the mouth. So I'm going to adjust my costume. If you're happy with yours as is, then don't worry about this step. But what I'm going to do is go to my gaster beam costume and I'm going to select the rectangle and move this side a bit further away from the center. Let's see what it looks like now. Okay, let's see what difference this makes. Yeah, I like that placement a lot more. Excellent. But we aren't taking any damage when we're being hit by them. So let's fix that next. Head back to your code and go to your heart sprite. Now have a bit of a look around until you find the when green flag click that's got your projectile collision note above it. Have a look down until you find if touching projectile. And nice and simply, we can just go to operators, get out an or operator. Just put that there for now. Then go to sensing, get out touching gaster beam, get this touching projectile and put it inside the or operator and then take the whole thing and put it back. So now if we're touching the projectile or the gaster beam, we'll take damage. Now there's a lot of different patterns that we can make with gaster blasters. And last week I showed you how to make an attack that I called the gaster box. But have you heard of the gaster circle? This is a classic attack that Sans uses on you in the Undertale game. And let's see if we can replicate something similar in our game. Now head to the projectile sprite go to my blocks and click on make a block and call this gaster circle. Then press okay. Make sure there's plenty of space underneath gaster circle and let's zoom in. So we need to create a circle of gaster blasters going around like so. Now there's a few different ways we could do this, but a nice easy way that I found was to actually get the projectile and move it around to measure out the circle. Let me show you what I mean. Go to the dark blue category, motion, and get out, go to x equals zero and y equals, let's say, minus 35. This is going to be the center of our circle, so that's why the y is minus 35, because our box is a little bit lower than center on the screen. Then we're going to point directly up. So get out point in direction and set that to zero. Then we're going to go to control, get out a repeat 10, change that to repeat 36, 
Now there are 360 degrees in a full circle. So this is going to divide those 360 degrees into 36 10 degree sections. Go to motion and get out, move 10 steps, put it inside the repeat. Now this is how wide the circle is going to be. So let's start off with maybe 150 steps. We'll see what that looks like. And then later on, we can make this number larger if we want a wider circle or smaller if we want a smaller circle. So then go to variables and get out set gaster spawn X and gaster spawn Y and gaster spawn D. Go back to motion and look down until you find the X position, put that over the gaster spawn X, get out the Y position and that put that over the gaster spawn Y and get out the direction and put that over the gaster spawn D. Next, go to control and get out create clone of gaster blaster. Let's move down a bit. Now at this point, we've taken our projectile sprite from the center of our circle, moved it to the outside of our circle, and we've created the gaster blaster. But now what we need to do is move it back into the center of the circle so it can turn and do the whole thing again. So let's go to motion and get out move minus 150 steps. If 150 steps is what we moved here, then we need to move minus 150 steps here. These numbers need to be the opposites of each other, otherwise our circle will be crooked. Then we're going to get out a turn 10 degrees. You can decide which way you want to turn, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Then go to control and get out weight 0 0.05 seconds. Okay, well let's see what that looks like when we put it into our gameplay loop. Go across until you find if mode equals evade. Go to my blocks and get out your gaster circle. Maybe pop a little weight in there as well. And let's give it a test. So we'll get the gaster box first, that's pretty normal. And then, ah, now our circle looks lovely, but can you see a problem? Our gaster blasters are facing the wrong direction. This is a nice easy fix though. So let's go back to the code, look for your gaster circle code. Now it makes sense, doesn't it? Because this direction here, would be the same direction as the projectile and it's moved outwards to the outside of the circle so it's going to be facing outwards. A nice easy fix, go to operators, get out a plus operator, put the direction into one socket of this operator and add 180. And that will flip the direction around so that it's the opposite direction. Put this whole thing back into our set gaster spawn D and let's give it a go now. Okay, after the box attack, we'll see. Perfect, there we go. That looks great. So that's the gaster circle attack done. And if you're happy with it, we can just leave it there. But if you wanted, we could add in inputs to make this attack more versatile, make it so that there are different variations of the gaster circle attack we could use. So this next bit is completely optional, but I want to add in a way of changing how wide the circle is. So let's right click right here where it says define gaster circle and then normal click on edit and then click here, add an input. We're gonna call this input width, then press OK. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get this width and move it down over our move 150 steps. Then we're going to operators, getting out minus 
putting it over the minus 150 right here, get out width and put it in the second socket of our minus operator. So now whatever this number is, we'll control how wide our circles are. So go back across to your gaster circle attack and you'll notice we've now got this little socket for our input. We know this is for the width. So let's try making the circle a lot smaller. Let's try uh, 80 and let's see what that looks like. We've got the box attack first. See, that's really cool. And this will allow you to do things like making increasingly larger circles. So we could have the first circle at 80, the next circle at 100, and the circle after that at 120. Let's see what that looks like. Now we've got this cool kind of spiral almost effect happening. So that gives you a lot of control over how wide you want the circle to be. As long as you can remember this input is for width. If you wanted, you could always add in a W right before the width as a reminder. When you're looking at Gaster Circle, this W will be like, oh, that's the width. You could also, if you wanted to, create inputs for this repeat 36, and then that way you could have maybe just half a circle or a quarter of a circle. If you put an input here for point and direction, then you'd be able to start the circle from a different starting position, maybe the bottom or the left. If you put an input here over turn 10 degrees, you can change the size of the gaps between the Gaster Blasters in your circle attacks. You could even use a minus number to reverse the direction of the circle. And if you put an input here for weight 0.05 seconds, you could make a larger or smaller weight in between each of the Gaster Blasters appearing. It's entirely up to you how many inputs you want to put into your Gaster Circle attacks. Have fun with it, have an experiment. And remember how we used inputs in our previous attacks and use that knowledge. Little tricks like having a letter or a word before the input so that you can remember what that input is for. Now, next week, I've got one more Gaster attack I want to show you how to make. And we should also probably do a bit of tidying up of some other little bits of code. So if you want to subscribe and ring the bell, you'll get a notification for when that's available. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you'd like me to do next, or if you need any help if your code's not working. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.